Hello everyone, joining me today is Jason Olson and he is running in the first judicial circuit for judge uh, coming up on election day. Jason, welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Please introduce yourself, give us your background, tell us who Jason Olson is. Well, like you said, my name is Jason Olson. Uh, I'm a veteran of the United States Navy, lifelong resident of Marion, Illinois. Uh, currently, I serve as an assistant state's attorney in Sling County. Been doing that for about 10 years now. Okay. Uh, prior to that, I had my own private law practice, both in Marion and Harrisburg, uh, as well as served as a public defender for both Sling County and Pope County. Um, I'm married 27 years to my wife, Lori. I have two daughters. Uh, one who's at Purdue University and then a senior in high school at Marion High School. Um, that's a little bit about me. Okay, and can you tell me why you want to be judge? Well, I, I decided to run for judge. Uh, I've been a prosecutor for almost 10 years now. Prior to that, I was a public defender for 11 and a half years. And as I've seen both sides uh, of the arguments in the aisle, I've decided that the ju being a coming judge would be the next natural progression in my career. Plus. I've seen ways that a judge can assist the community and assist the people who uh, we serve in the First Circuit. So it, I became uh, really involved in drug court and needing a drug court here in Southern Illinois, and that, that's a major uh, drive for me to become judge. And so how do you feel you meet the requirements for this office? Well, uh, having my own private law practice, I, I practice in civil law, uh, family law. Uh, as well as being a public defender, I was able to uh, practice in criminal law, juvenile law as well. So I've seen almost all sides of, of the law, mm -hmm. uh, as, as you would see it as a judge in the First Circuit. Um, and I've seen it from both sides. Uh, I've prosecuted cases and I've defended cases. I've tried over 40 cases to jury verdicts here in Southern Illinois. Uh, everything from first degree murder all the way down to simple battery charges. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it from both sides, which gives me a unique balance that I can bring to the bench. And tell me about integrity and ethical conduct. Of course, they are key in this uh, type of position. So how do you hold yourself accountable? Well, f first and foremost, you have to hold yourself accountable. Uh, when you go to court and you're sitting on, on the bench as a judge, you have to realize that, that this is somebody's, probably the worst moment they've had uh, in that year or maybe even their life. And they come to that court expecting to be treated fairly, to be treated honestly. And in order to do that, as a judge, you have to listen to both sides of the argument. Uh, there's always going to be differences in what people see. Mm -hmm. there, there's going to be one side of the story you get from the defense. There's going to be one side of the story you get from whoever's prosecuting the case or suing someone. And it's your job as a judge uh, to listen to both of those sides and decide the uh, facts of the case and decide them fairly and impartially. Uh, in order to do that, you have to hold yourself to a very high standard, which I do. And so tell me what are some specific issues you think are confronting judges here in Southern Illinois as well as in the First Judicial Circuit? Really what I see is a drug problem in Southern Illinois, uh, and especially throughout the First Judicial Circuit. And it starts with the opioid de epidemic. We've all heard about the opioid mm -hmm. epidemic, but it's just not, the opioids don't affect just criminal law. Uh, we also have such an effect where it goes into families, uh, which causes divorce, causes you know, problems for children. Um, it pro causes problems in foreclosures because people who get hooked and addicted to drugs, they end up you know, having a hard time making payments and their life has really taken over. And as a judge, well as a prosecutor, I should say, I, I've seen it firsthand. As a defense attorney, I've seen it firsthand, what drugs can do to people. And it's, it's not just the opioids, it's methamphetamine, cocaine, heroin. Uh, where people get addicted, and it just has a tremendous effect all across the spectrum of, of the legal system. So as a judge, you will deal obviously with criminal but also civil cases. Uh, how does your background and experience uh, prepare you for the, something like this? Well, one, one good thing, at having a background of both as a defense attorney and as a prosecuting attorney, is I've seen both sides of the argument. I've been on both sides, uh, so it gives me a balance that, that I can reach back and rely on. Also. In 21 and a half years of my practice, I've been in, in and out of court almost every single day, unless the judge is on vacation, <laughs> uh, or I am on vacation. Sure. So I've been able to learn from various judges throughout those 21 and a half years and pick up uh, on, on the way they treat people, uh, how you should treat someone uh, who comes in front of you, and, and just the ability to, to reach back and have that experience of, of jury trials and having that split second 
uh, moment where I have to make a decision on whether to object to evidence or allow it to come in. Uh, those split-second decisions have a far-reaching effect on cases and far-reaching effect on people when they come into your courtroom. Can you provide examples of how judges act and rule impartially? Well, judges, as they sit on the bench, whatever case comes before them, whether it be a civil case or a criminal case, uh, a judge has to sit there and listen to both sides of the argument. You can't make a, a decision uh, prior to hearing both sides. And in order to give each party their day in court, in, in most people they just want to be heard. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why they're in court. Mm -hmm. They want to be heard, be able to tell their story, and be able to tell it to someone who's going to listen to them. And I think as a judge you have to do that. You listen to both sides, give both sides equal attention, do not make rush decisions, and then once all the facts come in, apply the law to those facts and make a fair decision based on those, that law and those facts. What role does the circuit judge play when it comes to controlling costs, especially in smaller counties, uh, uh, w which we have a lot of here in Southern Illinois that are operating on really tight budgets? Especially in the first circuit, um, economics does play a role, mm -hmm. and, and judges can help with that. Um, I don't, as, as I have looked at Saline County, especially since I'm a prosecutor there, mm -hmm. we have a couple million dollars owed in back fines. Um, we can help in trying to help the prosecution and trying to get people to pay those fines, which, which is a help. Mm -hmm. Now there's some people that aren't going to be able to pay the fines, but there's some that are, and as a judge we have to enforce that and hold them accountable. But also, as you look at the cost of the program, uh, of the legal system, it's, it's the judge's opportunity and responsibility to, instead of making someone come in three or four times during a week or during a month, to try to consolidate those uh, court appearances so that they don't miss work as often and so that the judicial system is not constantly going over the same cases. In, in addition to that, it's uh, the economics of the, of the situation. We as a judge, we have the ability to uh, look at community service for people uh, as well as work with them in getting their payments. So I, I think as a judge you have to take all those roles uh, and I think you can have a positive effect and help the counties. And, and finally, with the new Bail Reform Act, mm -hmm. um, our system is, going back to the opioid epidemic and the drug situation, with the new Bail Reform Act, most of your low-level drug offenders are class three and four offenses, and so they're getting out on, on a lesser bail. So that's going to have a, a, we haven't begun to see the effects of that, but as we continue on, because this law was just put into effect January 1st, but as that law continues to take effect throughout our circuit, you'll see the, the county budgets uh, take a hit, and we will have to, as judges, be m much more aware uh, of the economics of our situation. Now, you kind of answered the next question, which is more about economics uh, and the, the impact. Is there anything else that you have seen or uh, that you feel like economics kind of plays a role in the ju judicial system here in Southern Illinois? Well, mostly, like I said, when you really look at the system and the people that are coming in front of the court, uh, we have to be very aware of the economics of the situation and, and not assess uh, huge fines that people will not be able to pay. We need to take a look at that and, and be responsible uh, as a judge when we're assessing fines and costs. And then a after we assess those costs, we have to hold ourselves accountable mm -hmm. as well as the prosecution to collecting those uh, fines and costs so that the counties uh, have the ability to continue to function. Can you talk to me about temperament and what kind of personality you would bring to the bench? Well, I think temperament's a, a huge thing for judges uh, because how a judge runs his courtroom and the temperament that judge shows in his courtroom or her courtroom is very important and sets the tone uh, immediately. Mm -hmm. And so I, I bring a, uh, a very, I'm not gonna say relaxed, it's, I would say fair but firm. Uh, I expect, if, if I was to be lucky enough to be elected to, to the bench, I would be, expect attorneys to show up, uh, be prepared, uh, be prepared to present their case to the court or to a jury, um, but at the same time, understand that there, excuse me, that there are times that, that attorneys need continuances or parties need continuances, and you have to be able to uh, ad adapt to those uh, challenges. Um, I've been able to learn from some of the best judges over the last 21 and a half years. Uh, and just to see how 
each of them approach each day and understand that, that again, the people that appear in front of you that are not attorneys, uh, it, it's a very uh, difficult experience to show up in court. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so you have to treat those people very, very fairly, mm -hmm. uh, very impartially, but also show them some compassion. Because, like I said, it could be somebody's worst day that they've had in their life, or, or and like I said, you just have to uh, approach it each person individually. You can't do it as a group, mm -hmm. but showing them that compassion, but being fair and firm with them at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, talk to me about uh, politics, because obviously this is an election. So, how do you keep you know once you make it to the bench, how do you keep politics out of the system? Because you do have to declare a party affiliation. True, and, and first and foremost, uh, politics has no place in the courtroom. Whether you're Democrat or Republican or Independent or Green Party it has nothing to do with your case uh, when you show up in a courtroom. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, if I, like you said, if I was lucky enough to be elected, your case will be decided impartially and be decided based on the facts and based on the law applied to those facts. Party affiliation has nothing to do with that decision. Uh, now, saying that, it, it's unfortunate that in our judicial uh, races we have to declare a party. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say the same thing for a state's attorney's race, uh, because as I as I look at uh, those two positions in, in general, politics should have nothing to do with it once you step in the courtroom. And what are your thoughts on cameras in the courtroom? I think cameras in the courtroom can serve a very valuable purpose to uh, the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have no idea what takes place in a courtroom uh, because they've never been there and don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, but they also have an interest in certain cases uh, when they come in front of the court. And so I believe that uh, cameras in the courtroom can be a good thing. I believe it brings transparency to the courtroom uh, and it allows you know, the general public to understand what's taking place with their judges, what's taking place with their prosecutors. Uh, because in a majority of time, cameras in the courtroom are going to be dealing with criminal cases. Alrighty, and we have one follow-up question, and that is about the Judicial Advisory Poll. This is a poll uh, conducted by uh, peers in the uh, this area of Southern Illinois, including Alexander Jackson, Johnson, Massac, Pope, Pulaski, uh, Union, and Williamson counties. And you have met the requirements for office. You are recommended, as is your opponent, you are recommended by a, a margin of 88.7% uh, versus 68.06%. .06%. So what is your reaction to a poll like this? Well, first and foremost, I was very proud of the results that I received. Uh, when you're being basically graded by your peers and judges uh, to get a score like that, uh, I was very humbled, uh, very honored. Um, but it also goes to show that you know, for 21 and a half years as I've been in the courtroom uh, almost every day that people respect what I'm doing. Uh, they understand uh, there, there's one part of that poll which uh, hits on integrity, scored very high on that. Uh, so I was very proud of that, uh, very proud of uh, my score on the legal ability and also uh, meeting the requirements office. Um, so it shows that uh, I take my job seriously, I try to treat people correctly, and I always try to be fair and impartial no matter what position I'm in. Because as a prosecutor, especially the last 10 years, we're not out there just seeking convictions. We're supposed to be doing the right thing and seeking justice. And I believe that poll uh, shows that I've been doing just that. All righty. Once again, Jason Olson, he is running for first judicial circuit judge. Election day coming up in November.